Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 28 of Weekend Warriors, the review series for Gran Turismo's various subcategories of sports car in a general sense. You've got traditional two-seater rag tops, maybe with not a huge amount of power to work with, but a lot of fun and low weight. Then of course you've got bigger sports coupes, maybe even luxury coupes from Mercedes, BMW, etc. Now this particular vehicle kind of spans a few categories at the same time. It is a two-seater ragtop sports car, but it also has the price, the exclusivity, the quality, the kit level of more of a luxury sports car. And it also has the marketing of an exotic. It has the price of an exotic, the rarity, the obscurity of one. And it also has kind of a, an aura to it which makes it seem kind of like a unicorn car as far as BMWs go. You very rarely see Z8s, and when you do, it seems like kind of a special occasion. When you see them used, they regularly cost well over a hundred grand, which is super sports car territory, and in some cases even supercar territory. But, I personally have some issues with this car. Now, it's not a bad car, and I don't necessarily dislike it, I just don't really get this car. I don't see the purpose of it. Now, to some degree it is kind of a throwback, an homage, if you will, to the BMW 507, which of course is also on the game. It's a great classic, a very popular one, but that car, I understand. That car is basically BMW's equivalent of the Mercedes Goldwing. They have the same kind of purpose. They're basically the top of the performance tree in the 50s. This car just doesn't even aim anywhere near that. It has more of an aura, to me at least, of a fashion accessory something which is all about image and style and looks and presence rather than actual performance that delivers on that appearance. Now, is it a bad car? No, not by any means. This car has a 4.9 litre naturally aspirated engine which, despite not having turbo or supercharger to aid it, still puts out 633 horsepower. That's very impressive. It also puts out 511 foot-pounds of torque, and it only weighs 1,289 kilos, which is also pretty good considering the quality of the car's construction. As far as style, it's pretty unique, similar to the 8 series from BMW, which is also pretty unique, but the car kind of has a, to some degree, love it or hate it kind of style. It has a decidedly more marmite appearance than something like a Z3 or a Z4 which are pretty much universally accepted as being pretty good looking cars whereas with this car if you don't like it you probably really won't like it and if you do maybe you'll like it more now for me personally I don't think it's an ugly car there are certain elements of the design which I do like I think it looks good from the back it's got quite a minimalist design and I do think that the color coded interior has a very nice mix of retro and modern style and the image of the interior and the back end of the car in particular actually reminds me very much of a Wiesmann also a German exotic sports car but the difference is the Wiesmann can actually deliver on the looks, it's a seriously quick car, especially the MF5 M5 V10 engine version, whereas this car just doesn't really deliver on it. Now 633 horsepower in a 1289 kilo car does sound like a good deal, so why am I saying that? Well that's in fully tuned form for a start, so of course it's going to have decent power. Most cars in the game when you tune them have pretty good power compared to what they started with. And in this case, you are running supercar numbers. But it doesn't deliver on those numbers. The car has a PP level of 568, which I would say is pretty good. It could easily be a much higher car than that. But for 166 grand, you would expect a lot from this car. Not necessarily that it would beat supercars or race cars, but at least a vehicle which would have performance and all-round ability that measures up to initially a very high price and then after you've bought it and tuned it a very high spec and the fact is it just doesn't the handling isn't bad but it's nothing to write home about and in a straight line the top speed is no better than an 8c or a california from ferrari no that's not bad but why not just buy those cars instead and have the full exotic package now for BMW fans, or fans of this car specifically, you won't be disappointed with it, I don't think. It's not a bad car in any particular way, but it feels 
kind of like wasted potential. The car is good at a number of things, but it doesn't feel great at any one thing. I would say it's a car which, as far as performance goes, is just passable. It's not particularly memorable, it's not particularly amazing, it's just okay. Visually, I would say it's striking, and the visuals are probably the main attraction for most people. If you like the way it looks, then you'll probably like the car. If you don't, it's not the kind of car which I'd say you're missing out on anything. So if you're a fan of it specifically, and don't mind paying out 166 grand for something which could easily be beaten by many cheaper sports cars, then go ahead and buy it. If you're looking purely for value for money, for the best performance you can get for the spec and for the money, then give it a pass, because it's not bad, as I said, but it certainly ain't great either. Overall, it's kind of a strange car for me to review. I have mixed feelings about the vehicle. As always, I try to keep it an objective review, but there's just something, as I alluded to earlier on in the video, that feels like wasted potential on this car. Plus the fact that I already said where the car doesn't even seem to know what it wants to be. So for me, it just leaves me with a feeling of something being off, and it's not a car that I use that much. But if you want to give it a try, it certainly won't disappoint you too much. There are far worse cars on the game, to be sure. But that's it overall for this particular review episode. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.